France, May 1968. A nation of strikes, of violence. A country paralyzed across its length and breadth. The simmering of unrest amongst its student population rapidly boiled, then boiled over. Citizens from every walk of life, from every class, became involved. Unrest, which had lurked beneath the surface, spilled into the open. France had been brought to its knees by a disenchanted majority who wanted more money, better working conditions, and a shake-up in the social system. Chaos ruled the streets. While the banks took stock of their reserves and eventually closed, housewives hunted for food as supplies dwindled. Earlier at the Assembly, the French Parliament, leading politicians from all parties arrived for a motion of censure against the government. Monsieur Pompidou, the Prime Minister, spoke convincingly against the motion. He won by a majority of 11 votes. But the dispute was gaining ground in the streets. Even before it had reached this stage, the government had set up urgent talks to control the conflict. It was too late. That night, the Latin Quarter of Paris became a battleground. The Prime Minister and leading government members desperately tried to stem the flood of dissent, but it was no use. Despite appeals for discipline and calm from less militant demonstrating leaders, big trouble was looming. The mob was incensed by the sight of riot police. Sanity and social responsibility were forgotten. During this dramatic night of bloodshed and terror, there were similar scenes in many centres of provincial France. Workers were already talking of victory, but still General de Gaulle remained silent. On the French-German border, more than 500 students from both countries waited for left-wing student leader Daniel Cohen-Bendit. Red Danny, as he is known, had been expelled from France. He refused to acknowledge his expulsion and told his supporters, my expulsion will not solve the problems of France. I will come back. Red Danny was eventually escorted out of France. On the day that General de Gaulle at last agreed to address the nation, members of trade union movements marched peacefully and with order through the streets of the capital. Could the general, president of the French Republic, solve his country's turmoil? He said he recognized the necessity for social changes and promised there would be reform. But he emphasized there must be law and order. The country must come first. In so many words, he said the strikes must end. Negotiations must begin quickly to get France moving once more. His speech ended, long live France. It was a typically stirring speech, but it failed. The unrest and violence had spread rapidly. In Paris, it was a night of wild disorder. The Latin Quarter was rocked with a violence such as it had never known before. During this terrible night that Paris will never forget, there were 400 casualties among the demonstrators. 150 police were injured.
in the early hours of the morning, a stunned France was counting its wounds. Paris looked like a blitz city. General de Gaulle's personal strength had failed to bring the nation back into line. He had called for a referendum on his leadership for June 16, but had said he might retire at the end of the year, an indication that he expects to win that referendum. But still very much under the pall and tension of the unbridled violence, discussions between the government, employers and unions go on. As spectators from across the channel, we can only hope that reason is quickly restored. <laughs> 